And welcome back to the Sports Hour with Alex Garrett and uh, part of Alex Garrett Podcasting and uh, Can You Dig Sports. And I know today everybody's going to talk about NFL Week 2 underway tonight against the Washington Redskins. I'm sorry, the Washington football team. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that if you're offended that I just said Redskins. I'm sorry. Faux pas on my part. But um, yeah, and the Giants not having... Saquon Barkley, that's going to be very interesting to see how things go. He He's listed as doubtful right now, but that's not the main story in sports. The main story in sports has to be this. I felt pressured by the FBI to consent to Nasser's plea deal. That is Allie Raceman of Team USA Gymnastics. And she, along with Michaela Maroney and... Simone Biles testified on Capitol Hill about the FBI's complete bungling. You know, there's been a lot of bungling going on in Washington, and this is no different. And the FBI saying, oops, sorry, is not enough. And it's going to get real today. The Sports Hour will hold the FBI to task because what? Medalist, gold medalist gymnast Ali Raisman, Simone Biles, and Michaela Maroney had a say will knock your socks off if you didn't hear it already. I don't really want to be the voice today. I want the women to speak out about this very serious m- malfeasance, mal- you know, malpractice of the FBI with regards to Larry Nassar's. Not just malpractice, but criminal and sexual abuse. I felt pressured by the FBI to consent to Nasser's plea deal. The agent diminished the significance of my abuse and made me feel my criminal case wasn't worth pursuing. Special agent in charge of investigating Nasser met Steve Penny for beers to discuss job opportunities in the Olympic movement. What are you doing, Chris Ray? What are you doing, FBI? She continued. USAG and USOPC have a long history of enabling abuse by turning a blind eye. Both organizations knew of Nasser's abuse long before it became public. Although you wouldn't know that by, their, by reading their press releases, which would have you and their corporate sponsors believe that athlete safety comes first. We have called for a fully independent, factual investigation for years now. Because I and these women who sit before you know firsthand these organizations and their public statements are not to be trusted. And so with that, I kind of wonder, is the Olympics losing ground? Is that why, not just COVID, but are the Olympics losing ground in the trust of the public eye? Which is why ratings are down, which is why... You could care about the Olympic medal count, but the actual performative put on by the Olympics, the actual pomp and circumstance that the Olympics try to do, that curtain is starting to fall, and these women are doing their damnedest to expose it. And I applaud them for that. I applaud them for calling out an organization that employed Larry Nasser. And yet, let this happen. USAG and it was like serving innocent children up to a pedophile on a silver platter. That's such a damning statement against the U.S. Team USA gymnastics and the committees. It was like serving innocent children up to a pedophile on a silver platter. You know... We love to talk about sports. We love to talk about and have fun talking about, you know, this, that, and the other. I could talk about how the grounds crew were ejected from trying to put the tarp on the field in Baltimore. That's kind of fun. But then there's some serious issues. And as I've said before, politics and sports mesh. And I I will say I feel like the FBI and Capitol Hill cared more about the steroid era. And they did about physical abuse to teenage girls. Think about that. 
Capitol Hill, FBI, cared more about, and the Mitchell Report, cared more about what the heck was going on in the locker rooms of Major League Baseball than in the training rooms of teenage girls uh, being left to the care of this monster. How fair is that? Well, Michaela Maroney, you know, she was a meme unimpressed, and then she was a Geico commercial uh, star. But the unimpressed look turned very serious and into tears today or yesterday on Capitol Hill. What I'm trying to bring to your attention today is something incredibly disturbing and illegal. After telling my entire story of abuse to the FBI in the summer of 2015, not only did the FBI not report my abuse, but when they eventually documented my report 17 months later, they made entirely false claims about what I said. After reading the Office of Inspector General's OIG report, I was shocked and deeply disappointed at this narrative they chose to fabricate. They chose to lie about what I said and protect a serial child molester rather than protect not only me, but countless others. My story is one in which special agent in charge, Jay Abbott, and his subordinates did not want you to hear. And it's time that I tell you. In the summer of 2015, like I said, I was scheduled to speak to the FBI about my abuse with Larry Nassar over the phone. I was too sick to go meet with anyone in person, and talking about this abuse would give me PTSD for days. But I chose to speak about it to try and make a difference and protect others. I remember sitting on my bedroom floor for nearly three hours as I told them what happened to me. I hadn't even told my own mother about these facts, but I thought as uncomfortable and as hard as it was to tell my story, I was going to make a difference and hopefully protecting others from the same abuse. I answered all of their questions honestly and clearly, and I disclosed all of my molestations I had endured by NASAR to them in extreme detail. They told me to start from the beginning. I told them about the sport of gymnastics, how you make the national team, and how I came to meet Larry Nassar when I was 13 at a Texas camp. I told them that the first thing Larry Nassar ever said to me was to change into shorts with no underwear because that would make it easier for him to work on me. And within minutes, he had his fingers in my vagina. I mean, she got very graphical. And can you blame her? They're trying to make their case for justice. And sometimes justice needs that graphical description. But I'm just mind-boggled that the FBI, that the Mitchell Report, that Capitol Hill got Mark McGuire, Rafael Palmero, on the stand quicker than to hear these women out. They're not girls. They're women out about their abuse. And I thought Capitol Hill was all about hearing out the women. Now, granted, they're finally doing it. But why is steroid use, why is baseball worth putting on the hill in a faster time than this hearing? Why is the FBI, as Michaela Maroney documents, sending false statements to protect Nasser? What I'm trying to bring to your attention today is something incredibly disturbing and illegal. After telling my entire story of abuse to the FBI in the summer of 2015, not only did the FBI not report my abuse, but when they eventually documented my report 17 months later, they made entirely false claims about what I said. That's disturbing. Uh, false claims, not taking her serious. And most importantly, it's disturbing they would do that to cover up this Olympic doctor. Now, as she was talking, a thought came into my mind. Who paid who off to be quiet? Was the FBI paid off to be quiet about this? One has to ask, especially when Allie Raceman says the FBI agent was going out for beers. I felt pressured by the FBI to consent to Nasser's plea deal. The agent diminished the significance of my abuse 
It made me feel my criminal case wasn't worth pursuing. Special agent in charge of investigating Nasser met Steve Penny for beers to discuss job opportunities in the Olympic movement. Job opportunities. That's the best we could do, FBI. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? All departments in Washington right now are riddled. We've got the Department of Defense uh, trying to explain and justify the indefensible way we withdrew out of Afghanistan. Now we've got this. Explosive hearings back to back in Washington. We might be sports fans, but we're taxpayers too. And the FBI's bungling, mismanagement, ma malpractice, malfeasance, and gross negligence is not what we sports fans and taxpayers deserve in Washington. And I hope Chris Ray, the current FBI director, is pushed out to resign for this. You could say anything about the FBI about the other stuff with Russia and Comey and all that. But with this, with this documentation on record now in the Capitol. What I'm trying to bring to your attention today is something incredibly disturbing and illegal. After telling my entire story of abuse to the FBI in the summer of 2015, not only did the FBI not report my abuse, but when they eventually documented my report, 17 months later, they made entirely false claims about what I said. The agent diminished the significance of my abuse and made me feel my criminal case wasn't worth pursuing. Now, in the afternoon of this, uh, Chris Ray was grilled, the FBI director, but it's not worth playing his limp wristed apologies. It's not worth playing his apology. I'm very, 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 very ticked off this morning because I went back and I listened to this and I said, the FBI, we pay these people to do the job. And it includes sports. And by the way, they went after people like Sean Miller of the Arizona Wildcats head coach in basketball about, and wiretapped him. But they couldn't do anything about this. Not only couldn't they do anything, they said the women were not in the right. They covered for this sexual abuser. They covered for the sexual abuser in Larry Nasser and this pedophile. And that should be grossing everybody out right now. And should be disgusted and should be calls for Chris Ray to resign for this behavior. Because to cover up for the Olympics' sake, to do the Olympics' uh, job, uh, uh, bidding, I guess they'd say, is unforgivable. And then to hear this? I felt pressured by the FBI to consent to Nasser's plea deal. Bad enough right there is damning. And when we come back from like, I want you to hear what Simone Biles had to say about her withdrawal from Tokyo while well, she did perform in one event, but why the Nasser abuse impacted her so much that she couldn't really do it in Tokyo. And she shouldn't be hounded for that. She should be honored for taking her mental health seriously and taking all of this seriously, unlike the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I'll be right back on Can You Dig It Sports and the Sports Hour with Alex Garrett. Hey, welcome back. And by the way, uh, as promised yesterday, didn't get to it, we'll air the Strength and Performance interview with uh, Warren Kelly. He does training right. He does training the right way. And uh, I want to talk to him about, about his East Coast Strength and Performance on this show while I have you. 
this time frame. By the way, you can listen to the Sports Hour 8 to 12 every day and our great lineup every day uh, on Can You Dig It Sports. And, and this is a different one. This is a little darker today. But, you know, we are taxpayers. We are sports fans, but we're also American citizens and taxpayers. And we should care about what these women have to say uh, in their time before even being Olympic gymnasts. And that's why I want to play you why Simone Biles could not perform to her best in the Olympics this year after the COVID postponement last year. The scars of this horrific abuse continue to live with all of us. As the lone competitor in the recent Tokyo Games who was a survivor of this horror, I can assure you that the impacts of this man's abuse are not ever over or forgotten. The announcement in the spring of 2020 that the Tokyo Games were to be postponed for a year meant that I would be going to the gym, to training, to therapy, living daily among the reminders of this story for another 365 days. As, I've, as I have stated in the past, one thing that helped me push each and every day was the goal of not allowing this crisis to be ignored. I worked incredibly hard to make sure that my presence could maintain a connection between the failures and the competition at Tokyo 2020. That has proven to be exceptionally difficult burden for me to carry, particularly when traveled to when required to travel to Tokyo without the support of any of my family. I am a strong individual and I will persevere, but I never should have been left alone to suffer the abuse of Larry Nasser. And the only reason I did was because of the failures that lie at the heart of the abuse that you are now asked to investigate. So there you have it. Simone Biles telling her side of why she could not compete in Tokyo 2020 this past summer. Can you blame her? For those who call her weak, for those who are disgusted that she resigned, you're the disgusting one. Not Simone Biles. She had every right to reason, to take herself out of it if she wasn't there mentally. And this abuse really impacted her. I think this testimony was on her mind too as it was probably scheduled well before the Olympics. Can you imagine preparing for this thing while trying to win a gold medal? No one can. No one can prepare for that while trying to win a gold medal. So, today... I say to Chris Ray, you need to resign. To the American taxpayer, we need to be outraged. And to the sports fan, stop DMing people like Sloan Stevens who lost a match in tennis. Stop calling these women weak. They are not weak. They are very strong. Stronger than you and I. Let's be honest. And can we have an honest conversation? That we need to hold the staffs accountable. We make such a big deal when the Mets training staff uh, can't handle Jacob DeGrom. Yet these women were vulnerable. And they were at the hands of a trainer that was a monster. And where's the care for that? Does it have to take testimony on Capitol Hill? And outrage from there? I think it does. But now that we know the facts, now that we know why Simone Biles could not perform, now that we know Allie Raceman's damage, which she went into, by the way, and you have to hear this. For me, um, just to paint a picture, I used to train some days seven hours a day when I was training for the Olympics, and processing my abuse affected me so much, and it is still something I struggle with that I can remember when I first shared my story publicly for a very, very long time, I didn't even have the energy to stand up in the shower. I would have to sit on the floor and wash my hair because standing up was too exhausting for me. Um, I couldn't even go for a 10 minute walk outside. And this is someone I've competed in two Olympic games. Um, 
And there are times where I feel like I forget what I'm saying. I feel like my mind isn't working. Um, I feel like I have no energy at all. I'm 27 years old, and I, um, my 80-year-old grandfather has more energy than I do. Um, and I've often wondered, is this, am I ever going to feel better? And um, it has affected my health. I, in the last couple of years, um, I've had to be taken in an ambulance because I pass out, and I'm, I'm so sick from just the trauma. And it, it might not even be after a hearing like this. It just hits me out of the blue. Um, and so I think it's important for people to understand how much, y you know, even if we're not crying, how much we are all struggling and how much. I'm going to get to that last line in a minute because I think that's so powerful. But there you have it. Couldn't even do 10-minute walks. That's how bad the trauma is. But, you know. We were going to have a capital hearing on why strikeouts were happening more and pitchers possibly cheating the game. We were going to have a capital hearing on pitchers, okay? But is this worth the headlines until it actually happens? Until it's actually told to us? I felt pressured by the FBI to consent to Nasser's plea deal. The agent diminished the significance of my abuse. It made me feel my criminal case wasn't worth pursuing. I guess not, because we only found a lot of this stuff out today. And that's just how much of a blind eye the media... I mean, yes, I'm glad that Nasser was forced to resign from Michigan State. And actually imprisoned for a total of 60 years on child pornography charges, serving his federal sentence in the U.S. penitentiary in Florida. And the FBI needs a massive shakeup. It's been beaten down over the last six, seven years. Can we agree on that? And this is just another black eye on a committee, on a, on a bureau that chooses to investigate a college basketball coach over, I don't know, tips about the Stoneman Douglas High School shooter m weeks before the attack, the mass shooting. Now this. It, it's tough to say we should pay our taxes sometimes. And this is one reason. When you hear the FBI falsifying and the FBI discrediting and covering up, that's disgusting. And it shouldn't be tolerated. And there's got to be a better way, a better solution to this than to say, shrug our shoulders and say, oh well, no. Pressure Chris Ray to resign. Right? Your congressman, your senator, and maybe, just maybe, let's not pay so much attention to U.S. to the Olympics. Especially if Team USA is not paying attention to their own athletes. Can you dig sports? A serious tone today. But it'll get lighter because we're going to talk with Warren Kelly next hour about strength and performance and the right way to do it so that you don't have a Jacob deGrom situation and by the way, sports not, you should find them on Twitter. I just did tonight. Uh, they are at sports not, S P O R T S N A U T. Like a sports astronaut, right? I'm Alex Garrett. We'll talk to you in a bit here on Can You Dig Sports Radio.